Hi, this is Derek Fitzsimmons with Living Beyond Breast Cancer. I'm here at San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium 2019 with Dr. Hope Brugo. Dr. Brugo, thanks for joining me here today. A pleasure to be here. Um, so what were some of the big things that you've seen out of this conference and what are you excited about? Well, you know, this conference, we had a lot of information about breast cancer that's, uh, I think, very exciting. On the back of ASCO and ESMO, it's amazing, actually, how much information we have and advances as opposed to negative data, which is always nice. So on the first day, we heard results I think the most exciting was with the oral tyrosine kinase inhibitor to catnib. Unlike the other agents like that, it actually blocks HER2 more than EGFR, which is HER1. And so by blocking HER2 and not the HER1, you actually avoid a lot of the toxicity that makes those agents hard to take. So in that study, patients with metastatic HER2-positive breast cancer who had progressed on trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and TDM1 were randomized to either get trastuzumab and capecitabine or that doublet plus ducatinib. And there was a placebo on the other arm, so you couldn't tell as much as possible. And what they saw was not only a delay in progression of disease and improved response, the delay in progression of disease was about two months, so it wasn't huge, but a diff really significant and clinically important difference in overall survival, modest toxicity, so some diarrhea that is not nice, uh, so, you know, eight episodes a day, but a minimal number, and you could control it easily, so 13%. Uh, versus, you know, in the less than 5% range on the Cape Cytobine. So, you know, definitely increased, but nothing like what we see with the other TKIs, not the rash and other side effects. The other thing that's really important about that study is they included people at brain metastases at some point. So they could have been treated, they could be stable without being treated if you had a little tiny lesion and you didn't need radiation right away. And in those patients, there also was a delay in time to progression, so time for the cancer to grow again, and also an improvement in overall survival. So we already know that tucatinib in this triplet combination can treat brain metastases in some patients. So this is very exciting. We expect to see approval of the drug early next year and lots of other studies, including tucatinib combined with TDM1, to see if we can actually maybe prevent brain metastases even earlier with two drugs that may be active in this area of unmet need. We saw data from the Affinity trial, and it actually fit in pretty well with this. Uh, what they saw was the addition of pertuzumab to trastuzumab and chemotherapy for early stage breast cancer, improved outcome for patients with node positive breast cancer and did nothing in node negative disease. Very helpful. It has some additional toxicity, and it, of course, that toxicity is more when you're getting chemo, where you can have a lot of diarrhea, um, and it has cost, and so, and longer time in the infusion center, uh, although subcutaneous trastuzumab and pertuzumab is coming up. But I think that uh, we really learned that there's a subgroup of patients who need more, but the others don't. What we also learned was that people still get brain metastases, only 2%. But it's still 2%, and yeah. it's been that way for a long time. So maybe drugs like ducatinib that are better tolerated could be used in the adjuvant setting for patients who are at high risk. And that's another area of study which is exciting. We saw some data looking at uh, the low-risk patients with HER2-positive breast cancer, no negative disease. Patients who we did a prior non-randomized trial and saw that we could treat patients with 12 weeks of paclitaxel and a year of trastuzumab and that those patients did extraordinarily well, even with seven years of follow-up. So the ATTEMPT trial actually randomized patients three to one to receive a year of TDM1, so every three weeks per year, versus that paclitaxel trastuzumab regimen. And what they found was that the outcome in patients getting TDM1 who had stage one breast cancer, already better you know, outcome than if you have more cancer, HER2-positive disease was very good with TDM1, uh, there was, of course, no hair loss compared to the paclitaxel treatment, although you can prevent that with hair loss, with uh, scalp cooling, the hair loss, uh, for 12 weeks. Um, there was less neuropathy, which is interesting as well. The tingling in your fingertips and toes was less with uh, TDM1 for a year than with uh, paclitaxel and trastuzumab, but the overall toxicity was the same. So after six months, there was an increasing rate of drop-off with TDM1. And having treated patients in that trial, there's a certain amount of fatigue because 
the TDM1 has more toxicity with each infusion than does trastuzumab, so you kind of get tired of it after a while. And people do get neuropathy, it's just mild. It gets better, but they get neuropathy over time. So I think that it's sort of a wash, and it's a more expensive drug mm -hmm. now, since the other two are both off patent. So I think it's not a standard of care but it may be an alternative in the future. And really what we need to do now is study a shorter duration of treatment. So six months, uh, even three months, although I don't think that will be done. But the next step would be six months of TDM1. And maybe that will be a good argument against standard naked chemotherapy. Sure. Then, of course, there were a lot of other really cool uh, studies. We learned some information about the oral chemotherapy drug catecytopine uh, that clearly has some impact in triple negative breast cancer and I think reinforces the data from the CREATE X trial which showed that if you don't have your chemo melt away with neoadjuvant chemo, that if you take capecitabine for eight cycles that your risk of uh, having a metastatic recurrence and uh, is lower and your survival is improved. So these studies I think really reinforced that uh, quite a bit. There were some neoadjuvant studies and some maintenance studies with immunotherapy that were all very confusing. Um, I think we, you know, we don't know what the right population to select is. The chemotherapy backbone clearly plays a big role. We saw some updated data from giving pembrolizumab where the uh, pathologic complete response or no chemotherapy at the end, uh, at the time you go to surgery, no chemotherapy, uh, no invasive cancer in breast or lymph nodes at the time you go to surgery right. after neoadjuvant chemo with pembrolizumab was clinically much greater and more significant. I mean, it was just uh, really, I think, more than 13% difference if you added pembrolizumab to standard paclitaxel carboplatin followed by AC. Uh, and what they did at this meeting actually was show that uh, there weren't big differences based on PDL1 positivity in the tumor. These marker that was important in the metastatic setting doesn't seem to be important. Um, and we also saw uh, some differences by subgroup where if you had more cancer, you benefited even more perhaps uh, from the adding the pembrolizumab. This I think is really important for patients with advanced cancer because we're learning more about what happens to the immune system when your cancer recurs. And that will help us overcome some of those features over time, I think. Um, it's gonna be really important to us as we move forward. There were some other studies. One study that looked at patients who have hormone receptor positive disease where they randomized the patients to receive either capecitabine uh, or a hormone agent with uh, the CDK46 inhibitor, palbociclib. And originally they started with exemestane, an aromatase inhibitor, and then they changed to fulvestrant. You could give fulvestrant too. It's kind of a messy trial. I think uh, patients had to have recurred within a year of getting their adjuvant treatment. So they had cancers that were high risk. Mm -hmm. And in that trial, they showed no difference in outcome between the hormone CDK46 versus the chemo. But part of it may have been the choice of endocrine therapy and change over time. It may have been a higher exposure to capecitabine. It may have been the specific disease subset. I feel we did called the PEARL trial. We didn't really learn enough from that. And it doesn't dissuade us from using endocrine therapy first. Um, you know, we're uh, going to continue to learn more during our time at San Antonio. And I think that one of the presentations that's upcoming that's important is an oral taxane um, and uh, called Araxol. And it's actually a combination of a drug which um, tries to block the tumor cell from pumping out the chemo called P-glycoprotein inhibitor. Okay. And an oral taxane that's in lots of little pills mixed with a detergent, between 80 and you take it by mouse. You take the PGP inhibitor first, and 30 minutes later, you take a whole bunch of little pills, and you take it three days in a row, weekly. And they compared that to paclitaxel given every three weeks, which is not a preferred or the best method of giving the drug. Mm -hmm. And they did show better response and significantly less neuropathy mm -hmm. and alopecia, hair loss. So, you know, what this turns out to be and the next studies with this drug will be very interesting. Uh, they had a suggestion of a survival benefit overall. In a modified analysis, they showed some survival improvement, but we know that weekly paclitaxel is better than every three week paclitaxel. So it's gonna have to be compared in terms of superiority with the weekly dosing. 
but having oral agents is incredibly important for our patients. We'll see what happens. Taking the, these pills for three days uh, actually is a little bit more toxic, so okay. that's what we have to learn. Anyway, Great. those were the main events. There's <laughs> a lot more, but a quick summary. Great. Uh, thank you very much, and thanks for taking some time with me. Uh, these you. are exciting results, and I look forward to seeing follow-ups from them in the future, too. Absolutely. Thank you.